try to retain employees for the long term. So our turnover is relatively low, especially in the kitchen area. We try to pay people well, treat people well, etc. And uh, then it's just really a matter of training and, and maintaining and making sure you're doing things right and, uh, and just being aware, keeping your eye on things. When there's a high turnover, you're spending much more of your time training somebody. Whenever you're training somebody, you're running the risk of not quite having the product perfect. You're running the risk of having more mistakes. You're running the risk of having the people that are doing the training burn out. You know, we, we have very little turnover. We train people off the bottling line into other parts of the company and into other parts of production. And I think low turnover in personnel is a huge part of becoming more efficient and just really uh, just making the whole production process gel in ways that you couldn't do if you had new people coming in all the time. We love the fact that we have relatively low turnover, but you know, it starts with the person that you hire. Our hiring criteria here is first, are you a happy person? A lot of people are Eeyores, not Tiggers. We want to hire happy Tigger people. And then are you motivated? Are you motivated to work? And are you motivated to do a good job? Smart, happy, motivated people make for a great work environment. <laughs> oh, I remember those days. Michelle was the first sewer we hired six years ago. And she's just out on her second maternity leave and this is her baby. And so you're gonna hear a lot of chatter here in just a second. <laughs> We're a product company, so the product has to be good. We like to think great. You know, that's kind of table stakes. But I think, you know, there's lots of bad companies. I think it's about the people that are here, not just the product. I mean, we make a nice product, and, uh, and we make it right here. We invite people to come in and see how we make it and to meet the people behind the product. Now, a lot of people ask me about, okay, so was there a quality inspection uh, anywhere along the line here? In fact, we don't have a QC inspector. Each step in the process, uh, someone is inheriting what someone else did right before them. And so if it's not right, they're going to know. And so it's sort of the, the whole idea behind lean, lean manufacturing is that each step of the way is checking the previous step. And so at the end of the line, when the, the final person is trimming the threads, turning the bag right side out, putting on a shoulder strap, they're touching and feeling the product and they know the product. That person's going to know if there's something wrong with the bag. As we realized that if we were going to grow, we were going to have more beer out there further places, we realized quickly that we needed to really put in some quality control procedures and now it's a full department. We've got a full-on lab team, we've got a, a sensory analysis lab that we just put in. All of our employees are going through a sensory training where they go in and do a triangle test. So we've, we've really put in a lot of quality control procedures as time's gone on just to make sure that when we send beer to New York or London or Copenhagen or wherever that we know what it's going to be like down the road. We decide what kind of beer we want to drink we try to make that beer, make sure we make it to the standard that we want to drink it. And we can't drink it all, so we hope, uh, you know, we hope we have some left and then we sell the rest.